Welcome to the 3 and 2, the video blog. I'm here with Ray Chen Gong of CCTV2. Fortune Magazine dubbed him the Lou Dobbs of China. Welcome, Ray. Thank you, Alan. Pleased to be here. I've got two questions for you. The first one is, tell me three things, three impressions that you have of the latest on U.S.-China trade relations. Mm -hmm. I just came back from Washington, D.C., where I covered the first uh, strategic and economic dialogue between U.S. and China, the very first time the Obama administration's full cabinet members uh, having orientation and comprehensive negotiations and talks with their Chinese counterparts all look very encouraging. Both President Obama, uh, Secretary Gardner, and Secretary Clinton uh, used the Chinese idioms at the opening ceremony. So the, the amount of respect and willingness to get to know China and to work with China uh, is unprecedented in this new administration. And uh, I, the, I interviewed them, and um, uh, the impression I got is that um, uh, U.S.-China relations is much more than just money. The media seems to be focusing on two issues. Previously, the appreciation of the Chinese currency, renminbi, and right now the safety of Chinese assets in the form of U.S. dollars. But in reality, the U.S.-China relations is much more important than just our currencies. Uh, we need um, each other's support on all international issues. U.S. and China um, uh, the largest developing country in the whole world and the largest developed country in the whole world have a lot uh, at stake and have a lot in common uh, in, in the new world order, particularly in the G20 framework. So what I want to say is that um, we should not focus on one or two thorny issues or not so thorny issues between our trade and, relation, trade and economic relations, but focus on the big picture, which is um, we have everything to gain and everything to lose if we, not, uh, if we choose not to work together. Really well. That's great. Thanks, Ray. And the second question is, why don't you tell me two big trends that you see happening in Chinese broadcast media? Well, I think the biggest trends is the same as, ever, as everywhere else in the world. Just as this video blogging by Alan um, uh, have demonstrated that everybody is a journalist. We're living at an age when everybody becomes a journalist. Uh, everybody can, can blog, video blog. Uh, everybody has his or her own media station which poses tremendous amount of challenges to us professional media people because um, we have to be more professional, we have to be more investigative, and we have to have more exclusive content. Otherwise, we can't even compete with you, Alan, because um, when, some, when news happens, you might, at, you, you might be at the, uh, at the site. And if you have a camera, uh, if you have a cell phone with a camera on it, you might be the reporter who, who brings first-hand information. So I think what we are having in China is, uh, is, uh, is a boom of media in all different forms, and a boom of individual media uh, in various forms that challenges, that, that distracts a lot of attention from traditional uh, TV or print media. That's exactly what's happening, and that's the reason why uh, media in China, professional media, either state media like us or uh, newspaper media, radio media, they have to transform themselves to, better, to be better suited for this, for this new era. So I think we're living in this age of real-time reporting and, uh, and interactive media. Uh, and eventually, I think, what will happen in China is a convergence of tra traditional media, like TV, newspapers, with new media, i.e. five years later, uh, probably CCTV.com will be more powerful than CCTV TV, traditional TV channels, which we will see is a combination of, of all of them, such as the future of the world. And, uh, um, and, and I have no doubt this is what's going to happen. This is Ray Chin Gong, live in Beijing on 3 and 2 the video blog. Ray, thanks a lot. Thank you, Alan. And you can tune in and see Ray on CCTV2's global feed. See you, Ray.